In this video, we provide the solution to question number nine for the practice exam number two for math 1220, in which case we're asked to evaluate the indefinite integral x squared times sine, excuse me, times the square root of four minus x squared dx. Sorry, I got a little ahead of myself there. When you look at the square root of four minus x squared, that actually indicates to us we probably wanna do a trigonometric substitution. Uh, in particular, we would take a sine substitution, x equals two sine theta. Notice this tells us that dx is equal to two cosine theta d theta. Don't forget that d theta there. This also tells us that the square root of four minus x squared is equal to two cosine. For which if you want to consider the right triangle, because this might be yet useful either now or later in the problem, the sine ratio um, is that x over two is equal to sine theta. So opposite over hypotenuse would be x over two. Then by the Pythagorean equation, the other side is the square root of four minus x squared. Um, and so we could we could learn this identity from that, but this also might be useful later on. So next, what we want to do is we want to plug all these pieces in there. The x squared becomes a two sine. Remember to square that. The square root becomes a two cosine, and then the dx becomes a two cosine as well. D theta. Uh, putting that together, of course, we're going to have two squared times two times two, so we get a coefficient of sixteen. I'm just gonna bring that out of the integral. Uh, we end up with a sine squared, and then we also have a cosine squared there, d theta. And so then we have to ask ourselves how we're gonna deal um, with these with these squares here. There's a couple ways here. Basically, the half angle is gonna come into play here. Uh, but what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna actually first use the identity that sine of two theta is equal to two sine theta cosine theta, that is the double angle identity. If I apply that here, I can actually clean up my integral a little bit, in which case we're gonna get four times the integral of sine, well, I can, I can write it like this, sine of two theta squared d theta. So I can have a single sine squared as opposed to a sine squared and a cosine squared, which is gonna be kind of nice here. Uh, the next thing that I wanna apply is gonna be the half angle identity, because sine squared of two theta would equal one half one minus cosine of four theta. Applying that identity in this situation, we end up with two, because one half times four is two. Um, just so you know, the 16, I had to borrow two of the two of the four twos there in order to make this identity work. That's why there's a four there now. So we have two times the integral of one minus cosine of four theta d theta. That's now a function that I'm ready to find the antiderivative of. Uh, so taking the antiderivative, we're going to get two times theta minus one fourth sine of four theta plus a constant. Okay, uh, for which now I have to start translating these things back in terms of uh, theta somehow or another. Now with the sine four theta, we're gonna use this identity again, right? So what we get there, I'll distribute that two through. So you're gonna get two theta minus one half, but then sine of four theta is the same thing as two times sine of two theta, cosine of two theta plus a constant. Uh, this two and one half now cancel out here. Uh, with regard to the theta, you can take this sine ratio and solve for solve for theta there. This is going to give you two times sine inverse of x over two. Uh, then for the next piece, we have this uh, minus sine of two theta, cosine two theta. Well, again, for sine of two theta, you're gonna get two sine theta, cosine theta. We have to get it back into the language of theta. And now for the cosines of two theta, we use the double angle identity there. Cosine of two theta is equal to cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Um, and so that's what we're gonna plug in for cosine of two theta. We end up with this cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta plus our constant. And so let's unravel them what we have here. So the first part involving the sine inverse, nothing's gonna happen there. So we get a two sine inverse of x over two. Uh, then for the next part, we have, let's replace each of these pieces here. The sine, remember, is the same thing as x over two. The cosine, um, if you solve for here, you end up with the square root of four minus x squared over two. Some things we can do is this two can cancel with that two. Uh, then we have a cosine squared, which is gonna give you four minus x squared over four. 
And then we're going to get a sine squared, which is x squared over 4 plus a constant. I do want to simplify this a little bit more because uh, notice what happens here. You have this x squared over 4. That will cancel with this x squared over 4. Um, you end up with a 4 over 4 in that situation. Actually, I take that back. Uh, official JK on that one. This is a minus and a minus. This actually is going to double up. Uh, so this will then become 4 minus 2x squared over 4, which is the same thing as 2 minus x squared over 2. Um, and so therefore, this denominator of 2 can combine with that one. So we can get a coefficient of 1 fourth there. So let's write this again, 2 sine inverse of x over 2. We're then going to get minus. What we have here is a coefficient of 1 fourth. We have an x. We have a square root of 4 minus x squared. And then we also have a coefficient of of 2 minus x squared. Now, if you want to, you could flip the direction of this to get x squared minus 2. You factor out a negative 1, which makes this a positive. And then lastly, you'll have a plus c at the end. Don't forget that plus c there. And so this then gives us the antiderivative of the function here using trigonometric substitution.